Everyone knows that feeling when you are ready to shoot, crosshair already on enemy's tank, but suddenly your gunner is knocked out. Some tanks can escape, some are helplessly waiting for enemies reload, but M3 Lee players know that one killed gunner is not something that stops your kill streak. If you don't like to sit idle between reloads and have a feeling that one gun is not enough for you, USA Medium Tank M3 Lee will give you ability to operate 37mm gun, 75mm gun or both of them at the same time. This vehicle almost feels like controlling two tanks at the same time providing you with tactical choices that wouldn't even be possible with the usual vehicles. In the video I'll show you what two guns are capable of, how to control them more effectively and why it's good to drive slow while controlling this tank. 37mm cannon is your main gun. It's mounted on a turret and as expected from turrets, it's located on top of the tank and can rotate freely with a speed of 18 degrees per second. That is really good compared to some of similar battle rating tanks and only gun's depression of minus 6 degrees can be an issue because that is less than what USA tanks normally have. On the other hand, 75mm is built into tank's hull, which makes it more difficult to operate. First of all, it has limited horizontal traverse angle of 15 degrees to each side. That means to use it, enemy must be somewhere in front of your tank. And another thing, because it's closer to ground, any small rocks in front, between gun and enemy, can block the shell from reaching target. Because cannon calibers are different, both guns shoot different ammunition. The smaller one shoots solid armor-piercing shells and there you can choose between two options, armor-piercing and armor-piercing capped ballistic capped. Most notable difference is that the first one has slightly more penetration on short distance, while the second one loses less penetration when shooting distant targets. They have similar penetration properties at range of around 500 meters, so the shell choice will depend on how far your targets are located. But in general difference is not too big and it's okay to have only one option, since most of the time shooting two guns separately, while they both have quite small reload time, will already require a lot of attention and there will be no time in engagement to be concerned about switching shells. The 75mm cannon also have several options. A high explosive is not powerful enough to be effective, solid armor piercing shell that has the most penetration of any other shell available to this tank, or armor piercing high explosive with over 60 grams of explosive. And in case you forgot, Explosives are very bad when detonating inside the tank. Knowing how devastating APHE shells are, it's worth sacrificing 10mm of penetration to have a shell that has so good post-penetration effect that one-shots opponents most of the time. Its penetration is similar to your 37mm gun, but that is enough to pierce through front of any tank at your battle rating. But when overtiered, carrying few armor piercing shells for your biggest gun can be a game changer if you face something like Soviet KV-1. Your smaller shells have a muzzle velocity of nearly 900 meters per second and gun is reloaded every 3 seconds. It makes it easy to aim at distant targets and any mistake can be quickly corrected with another shot. Knowing that less than a kilogram projectile rarely one-shots opponents, ability to shoot quickly and precisely is a blessing. The bigger gun take about 5 seconds to reload and muzzle velocity is almost 600 meters per second. And that is noticeably slower, so you should aim higher to compensate worse ballistics. And keep in mind that cannon is already located closer to ground. These things make big cannon harder to aim and every missed shot will take slightly longer until you can shoot again. Armor is above average than what you would expect from a medium tank and is about that thickness when effectiveness depends on what kind of vehicles are you playing against. Against your battle rating opponents, frontal plates protects you very well, especially if you keep some distance where all low caliber cannons lose significant amount of penetration. But at close range or when overtiered, 
you should assume that anyone will be able to punch through armor. The only thing that could help in this situation is trickiness of armor. Tank definitely doesn't look how people usually imagine tanks and has plenty of strange looking plates, curves, 100mm thick straps, 12mm straps. I want to believe these random looking things are for protection purposes and not to prevent vehicle from falling apart. Additionally, vehicle is asymmetrical. One side has gun while another has angled plates. And all these little details can be tricky for an opponent and time to time will save your crew members from dying. And when it comes to dying, whoever tries to speed up this process with your tank will have a hard time even if his shots can penetrate your armor easily. Because not all shells have so much post penetration effect to disable unusually large crew of 6 members. It gets even more difficult because if at least one of your gunners survives, you can still defend yourself against an opponent who is waiting for a reload. Talking about mobility, you can't expect vehicle with a large crew, 2 guns and good armor to be light enough for flanking maneuvers. When it comes to driving forward, 38 km per hour is your limit. Not the slowest tank, but definitely below the average. Making turns is also quite slow, and that gets even more painful knowing that rotating your hull towards enemy is important to effectively use both of your guns. Reverse is capped at 5 km per hour, but being slow is not always a bad thing especially for M3 Lee, because both guns have vertical stabilizers, which are mostly effective when moving at low speeds. This doesn't allow you to shoot precisely on a move when you are moving faster than 10 km per hour, but it will compensate the hull wobbling when stopping or starting movements and very slow reverse speed allows you to exploit your stabilizers in full to disengage and send very accurate shots at the same time. You can also shoot smoke shells from your 75mm gun. On one hand, that means that you can only launch smoke in the direction tank's hull is facing. But on the other hand, you still have another cannon and you are not left defenseless for the duration of reload like other tanks who can load smoke shells into their guns. When you need that additional firepower to deal with planes or trucks, you have two small caliber machine guns. One is coaxial with a smaller cannon and another is mounted in a little turret that is located on your turret. In arcade, because of engine boost, you will become more maneuverable and on first look, faster moving hull towards enemy will let you use 75mm gun more often. But in practice, because of arcade game mode specifics, the biggest cannon of M3 Lee will be used even less. Because of markers, you cannot stay in the open and naturally will seek for some solid cover, like rocks or buildings. And because the material of which rocks are made is heavier than air, they will be located on the ground. You know what else is close to the ground? The 75mm cannon, which will be blocked by cover you hide behind. Of course, it's possible to approach building by exposing only tanks right side, but this way you won't be able to use another cannon unless exposing a very big part of your tank. But all these things are more difficult to perform and most of the time playing arcade will just mean using 75mm gun less. But how do you control all these guns effectively? There is easy way, a hard way and a medium one. The simplest way, do nothing. Every time you press fire button, both guns will shoot. If 75mm cannon is too far from where you are pointing, its aiming circle will turn red and won't shoot. The disadvantage of this is that both guns shoot at the same time and because of different gun placement and ballistics, one shell will fly higher and another lower. At long ranges, that means that at least one of your shell will not hit the target. The hardest way is to bind keys for separate guns and control them one by one. It also has disadvantages. First of all, whenever you switch guns in sniper mode, you get a scoped view from different parts of the tank and that change of view can make you lose your target, especially when lower gun is blocked by something on the ground. And whenever you control one of your guns, another freezes in place and you will need to align them separately each time or switch to control them both 
to align and then switch again to control them separately. This way of control is quite difficult to perform because of all that micromanagement and requires you to bind at least two additional keys for both guns and a third one to use them both at the same time. I used the control mode I found to be the easiest but at the same time allowing you to shoot cannons separately. It requires you to bind only one button for firing secondary gun. This way I always use scoped view of the upper gun that is usually above anything that can block line of sight. After shooting first projectile I can adjust my aim for different ballistics and only then shoot another gun. Disadvantage of this is when your turret is facing sideways and you suddenly need to shoot 75mm cannon right in front of the tank, you will either need to wait for your turret to use scoped view or shoot unscoped in third person view. Overall M3 League gives you more firepower, more opportunities and of course fun. If you are willing to put some effort into controlling more difficult tank. Your view is blocked by smoke or trees, just keep sending shells into the approximate area of enemy's position. Fast reload lets you just spam the area where enemies can hide. Getting hit also rarely leaves you completely vulnerable. Enemies will have hard time surrounding you if you can control both sides of where enemies can come from. M3 Lee is one of these unusual and fun low tier tanks that are often left unnoticed. Because it can effectively research only first and second tier tanks, it has small value for anyone unlocking top tier vehicles, but it's one of the best choices when all you need is a vehicle which effectiveness greatly relies on your skill and rewards that skill by providing a very wide variety of options.